Hi there everybody and welcome back. In this video, I'm going to take you through the most common covalent dot and cross diagrams that I recommend you're familiar with at the start of your A-level in chemistry. We're kicking off here with a hydrogen gas molecule, which is made up of two hydrogen atoms. Each hydrogen, because it's in group one, contributes one electron to the formation of the covalent bond. And we pair up electrons between the two atoms like a zip holding them together. Remember for A-level, your definition of a covalent bond is a little bit more complex. We have to make sure that we describe it as the strong electrostatic attraction between the shared pair of electrons in the zip and the nuclei of the two atoms either side. Our next molecule is that of HCl, which you should recognize as hydrochloric acid. Here we've got our hydrogen, which remember is from group one that we saw in the previous example, but we've also now got an atom of chlorine. Chlorine is in group seven and therefore it has seven valence, remember that's another term for outermost, electrons. Now not all of those electrons are going to be involved in the covalent bond. In fact, we're only going to use one of them because we only pair up one of our electrons from the chlorine with the one electron that the hydrogen was able to contribute to the covalent bond. Any remaining electrons, so that would be the other six from the chlorine, get positioned around the chlorine atom in the diagram in pairs to keep things nice and simple. And I recommend you pair them up like 12, 3, 6 and 9 on a clock face because it helps you keep track of everything. Our next example is H2O. And it's the first example that we've got so far, which has a central atom surrounded by multiple other atoms. Here, the oxygen is central and it's surrounded by the hydrogens. I've given you a displayed formula diagram just next to the formula of H2O here, so you can see the positioning of some of the bonds. Although you don't have to maintain these positions all the time. Each line in a displayed formula diagram represents a dot and a cross in a dot and cross diagram. So even without knowing the group numbers of the atoms actually involved in the molecule, I would be able to draw a good proportion of the molecule in a dot and cross diagram form based purely on this displayed formula version. A displayed formula diagram shows all the atoms and all the bonds using the atom and stick kind of notation. The displayed formula diagram though doesn't tell me that oxygen is in group 6 and therefore it's going to need four more electrons shown around itself to make sure that we represent all six of those original electrons that the oxygen had to offer. So here you can see I've got two lone pairs, two non-bonding pairs that are drawn on the top and the bottom of the oxygen. Don't worry if you didn't put them in these exact positions, that's not massively important. It's how many of the pairs you've got that's significant. On screen now, I'm taking you through our final example for this page, which is CH4, a molecule of methane. Look at how I position the electron pairs between the atoms all the way around and try and be as consistent as this with your diagrams. Some molecules in chemistry contain double or even triple covalent bonds. CO2 is a good example of a molecule which has this because it contains two double bonds. A double bond is a little different from a normal single covalent bond because it includes four electrons, normally two from each atom. Take extra care when drawing the dot and cross diagrams that include double or triple bonds because positioning your electrons carefully between the two atoms so that they look like a zip has never been more important.
Once you've got your bonding pairs of electrons sorted, don't forget to refer back to your atom group numbers from the structure to add in any non-bonding pairs. For example, your oxygens here were from group 6, and they only contributed two electrons each to the formation of the double bonds. So that means you need to put in some more oxygen electrons to finish your diagram. Our final example here is for a molecule of ammonia, NH3. Just to review some of the rules with you, nitrogen is in group 5 on the periodic table, which means nitrogen has got 5 valence, or outermost, electrons. Three of these valence electrons are going to be involved in bonds with the three hydrogens. However, two of the five electrons form that lone pair that you can see I've labelled up on the displayed formula diagram. It's perfectly fine to leave this lone pair not bonded to anything, and in fact, that's exactly what I want you to do. I've found over the years that people seem to put a random hydrogen onto this for no reason early on in the course, and I'd rather no one fall into that trap this year. So those are the early days covalent dot and cross diagrams that we expect you to learn as part of your introduction to A-level chemistry. Click the links on screen now to be taken to other volumes in this starting out A-level chemistry series. And until next time, happy revising.